Hello Ratner community. It's my pleasure to introduce this webinar on mental health and well-being for our students. Wellness of our students is always a paramount concern for us as a district and especially under these circumstances while all of our students are learning online and we're all working from home. I hope our families find this webinar helpful. I want to thank Mr. Regal and Mrs. Lesage for putting this webinar together with their teams. I hope everyone is well. Now I'll turn it over to Mr. Regal. Take care. Hi everyone, I'm the Assistant Director of Special Education. Welcome to this webinar. Thank you for joining us if you are watching. Um, we put together a webinar, Jenny Lesage and I, last week and that sparked some um, additional uh, conversation on what other resources and information we could provide our parents um, as we continue with this endeavor and working at home. And one of the main topics that keeps coming up is uh, mental health and well-being. So I'm going to, in a second, let um, these wonderful ladies introduce themselves. But these, this group of staff, along with the rest of our staff, but this group of staff has really been on the front lines with supporting um, our students and families um, with all of those mental health and well-being needs. Um, and as we continue to um, unfold with this um, endeavor, we really want to provide as much information to you as possible, um, not only posted on our website, but also through this webinar. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually let them introduce themselves. But before I do that, I just want to let the community know that Radnor um, School District um, has not endorsed any of these resources, nor have we vetted all of them. Um, we certainly have great partnerships um, with a lot of the resources I will provide. However, we have not, um, of course, had the opportunity to vet all of them, um, but simply providing that information to parents so that you can use it as, at your discretion. All right, so I'm going to let um, everyone introduce themselves and then we will post um, the PowerPoint and get going. All right, ladies. Hi, every Hi everyone. I'm Christine Culp. I'm the high school social worker at Radnor High School. Hi there. I'm Erin Perviler. I'm the Lakeside Clinical Support Counselor at Radnor High School and Radnor Elementary School. Hi everyone. I'm Nadine Carroll. I'm the SAP Specialist from Karen Treatment Centers and I support students and families at Radnor High School, Middle School, and one of the elementary schools. Hello, my name is Caitlin McLaughlin. I'm the clinical support counselor from Lakeside at the middle school as well as Wayne Elementary. Hello, Radnor community. This is Kira Evans, the social worker, kindergarten through eighth grade. All right, so we will start the PowerPoint. Um, and just for everyone's information, this will also be shared when we share the webinar link. So as we go through, there are some resources for you to click on um, and you'll be able to do that when it is posted. All right, ladies, take it away. Hi there, I changed the view on me. So hi again, so I'm Erin Perviler. Um, a lot of the students might know me as Mrs. P. Um, and again, I'm from Lakeside. I work with the high school and uh, Radnor Elementary. So I'm just going to give a brief overview about um, what Lakeside has been doing with Radnor this year. Um, so this past school year, Lakeside counselors, myself and Caitlin, um, have been supporting students who, for whatever um, their reason, have been having trouble accessing their education. Um, some of the more common things that they've been struggling with would be things like anxiety, depression, um, emotional regulation, or things kind of related to that that create barriers to their school success. Um, we work with students in individual or group settings to help them build their skills um, and work through their struggles so that they can be their most successful selves in school. Um, we do want to mention that our service is a um, school-based additional support. Um, it's not meant to replace any outside treatments and it does not um, in itself therapy. Um, so on the next slide um, is specifically at the high school. Um, so I work with students primarily individually um, with both regular education and special education dealing with some of those issues that um, I mentioned before. Um, so now that we're doing school virtually um, obviously some struggles might have eased but some have also definitely increased. Um, Obviously, this is a very difficult time for all of us, um, and I'm just very glad that I can continue to support our students virtually. Um, so the students on my caseload, um, I can still keep in touch with them through phone calls or through Microsoft Teams web um, video platform. Um, 
And so the students on my platform are identified through the SAP process, which is the Student Assistance Program. Um, and more information for that can be found on the school website. There's the link to that on the PowerPoint slide there. Um, and it's common, you know, that right now we're all maybe not feeling 100% mentally or emotionally. Um, but if you do have concerns about your students' mental health well-being, um, you can reach out to their school counselor or anybody else on that SAP um, list on that website um, to see if it might be appropriate or if there are other things that the team can offer to help assist your student as well. Um, so with that, we'll let Caitlin talk about her part with Lakeside um, at the middle school. Good morning again. Um, I am Caitlin and my students call me Miss Caitlin. Um, I am at the middle school four days a week as the clinical support counselor. At this level, I'm providing individual counseling for students who may be experiencing those barriers to success in school that Erin had spoke about. This could be related to social and emotional health concerns. And what this may look like is a student who struggles to get through the school day. They may avoid classes and assignments altogether. They may have difficulty managing the stress of the school day and not sure really how to voice those concerns to their teachers. Or they may just have some friendship troubles going on, which is very common at our middle school level. There are a number of challenges that our students are facing. Um, so each session is tailored to that specific student and we focus on all mental health concerns as they arise. Um, we work on some mindfulness activities, deep breathing, developing coping skills. Um, and sometimes the students just need a break and I'm one of the trusted adults that they can go to, talk and then move forward with their day. During the extended closure, we are still providing um, assistance to our students. And what you may be seeing at home is students may be struggling with their schoolwork or avoiding Schoology and completing assignments. And I wanna say that this is normal, but if you do see bigger concerns arise and see changes that may be difficult to cope with, we are still here to help. At this time, I'm providing teletherapy via phone call and Microsoft Teams. So if you feel that your child may need a little bit more assistance with their mental health, you can reach out to their guidance counselor and then we'll look at what the next steps would be. An option may also be an RMS SAP referral. Um, you can click the link if you would like further information on this team at the middle school level. Um, I am available to regular education and special education students. If your child has an IEP, please reach out to their case manager as well. Um, next, we'll touch base on the elementary support as well. So Lakeside is there. Erin um, is at Radnor Elementary, and I am at Wayne Elementary one day a week. Erin has provided both individual and group counseling, uh, while my focus at Wayne has just been individual sessions. And a session at the elementary school may include a brain break or a student taking some time to relieve a little bit of stress, get some energy out and get back to class. We also work on identifying emotions and regulating those emotions. So a child figuring out what it means to be angry or sad or happy, and then how we can manage those emotions appropriately. Again, this service provides students with a confidential and safe place to open up about their feelings and concerns what that they're facing in school or at home. And if you find your child is struggling with schoolwork and emotions at this time, please feel free to reach out to guidance as well. Um, next, Nadine Carroll will speak about the Karen Treatment Centers. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, again, I'm Nadine Carroll. I'm the SAP Specialist uh, for Radnor School District, and I work for Karen Treatment Centers. Karen's a drug and alcohol treatment facility in Warnersville, PA, that's close to Reading. Uh, but within Karen, I work for the Student Assistance Department, and within SAP, I'm contracted to work with Radnor to provide education, prevention, and intervention services to students. And I've been providing services for a number of years to so the middle and the high school. And then this year, I'm also down at the elementary level, providing support for students at eighth and elementary. And I wanted to just spend a few minutes to talk about some of the services and student supports that I provide, and then just highlight a few of the resources um, that Karen has to offer to the community. And so my services um, can include and look like a number of different things. I've done some individual psychoeducational work with students, some classroom presentations, assemblies, 
Um, but really the services focus on two main areas and that's student support groups and also offering comprehensive behavioral health assessments. And both of these services are provided through our SAP program and which Caitlin and Aaron have already discussed. So basically when a student is referred to SAP, the team comes together to really determine next steps. Um, a number of different supports could be offered or kind of brought to the table. Sometimes it could be a support group, sometimes it could be an assessment. And an assessment's really an opportunity to get to know how a student's doing um, in all aspects of their lives, to kind of see where the challenges are, and then to work with the families to determine the next steps, to connect them to resources, whether at the school or in the community. And so both of these services, the support groups and the assessments are still being offered virtually while we're in the extended closure. Um, the support groups especially that we're focusing on are really right now resiliency and stress management. You know, we're really trying to look at what the students are struggling with and the groups are really being crafted um, to look at these particular issues. So helping students process their feelings at this time, how to cope with these extra challenges. So the online learning, being removed and separated from their peers and their friends, um, the things they've lost because of COVID-19. And then again, as Aaron and Caitlin have already discussed, um, the students can be referred to their SAP team at the school um, to potentially help them get connected with these services. And so then if we move on to the next slide, um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of the programs that Karen has right now that are open for the community. Um, so this one just really discusses our digital learning courses. And this is actually a brand new initiative that just rolled out this year and is sort of perfect for the stay at home time. So these programs are free of cost, they're available to anyone. Um, and they primarily focus on substance use prevention and intervention strategies. Um, there's a link at the bottom of this slide and also on the next two that would take you directly to these courses if you're interested. Um, if we go to the next slide, and I'm not going to go into all the details of these, but it just highlights some of the different courses. So there's one for students, which is um, a nicotine reduction and cessation course, and that really kind of addresses uh, the rise in vaping that we've seen in the last few years. For parents, there's one on parenting for prevention, um, kind of how to talk to your kids about drugs and alcohol. Uh, if we go to the next slide, there are a couple courses for professionals. So one looks at vaping and marijuana trends among youth and also the impact of substance use disorders on the family. And then finally, on the last slide that I have here, I just highlighted a webinar that was just put out. Um, this is also kind of geared toward parents and looking at marijuana trends, um, which has some really great content on it. And so these are just a few examples of some of the resources that Karen has right now that's available for the community. Um, and I think that's a pretty good segue to the next part of the webinar um, where we're gonna hear from Ratner's social workers. Great, thank you, Nadine. Hello, Ratner families. As your social workers, Christine and I attempt to keep up with the most up-to-date resources. We feel that now more than ever, the information online is really good, but it's always changing. So our hope through these slides is that we will give you a direct starting point. Our other goal is to assist families with basic needs. So we include tips, links, and information for you or a family member. We are all in this together and basic needs are a priority. So please don't ever feel alone. So to begin, I feel comfortable stating that the food support in Radnor is solid. Between the district meal program, the food gift card distribution, and Wayne's food pantry, no one should be without food. If you have the means and you're interested in supporting the food cause, you may donate to the PTO food gift card drive, or participate in the Wayne Methodist Food Pantry collection on May 9. You bring your groceries, you stay in your car, and someone will take the groceries from your trunk. So take a look at that information. It's on Wayne Methodist um, website, and that is going to be on May 9th, Saturday, May 9th. So our next topic, housing. Our biggest tip right now is to pay something, anything, and communicate in writing. Right now, courts are closed, so there currently are no evictions. However, please use these links for guidance if you need assistance with housing. 
as we all know, next slide, technology and internet is now considered a basic need. So many companies are increasing their services to their already existing customers, and they are currently not going to cancel service. But please reach out to your internet provider if you are concerned about payment in these coming months. Also, please reach out to us if you are having internet, you know, problems getting internet into your home, because we do understand at this point that internet is a basic need. Okay, next slide. Similar to technology, utilities companies, utility companies are communicating that they are currently not holding shutoffs at this time. As I stated during the housing slide, communicate with the company if you're concerned about payment. Communicate, communicate, communicate. That is, that is our biggest tip right now with some of our, our companies that we're working with to pay our bills. Okay, on to healthcare, I believe. As we all know, PA is committed to making sure that all kids have health insurance. Apply online if your wages have changed or you've had a loss of employment to make sure that your child's health care stays intact. Okay, at this time I wanna mention ways to help your neighbors who may be impacted financially. You may have noticed a link to Radnor Educational Foundations Neighbors Helping Neighbors. You may donate to this fund through Radnor Educational Foundation. Neighbors Helping Neighbors is a financial assistance resource for school district families that helps during an unforeseen circumstance. None of us know the long-term financial impact that's gonna happen due to COVID. However, Radnor Educational Foundation is committed to help. So in closing, rest assured that Radnor School District is committed to supporting the whole child. This includes the entire family system. Now Christine is going to talk to you more about the current trends that we all are noticing during this time. Hi there. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of time to shift gears from basic needs, which Kira talked about. Um, during the next part of this webinar, we want to talk about, uh, take some time to address the current issue um, and consider someone's overall well-being um, and recognize that at a time like this. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about job loss or income changes at this time. Um, we want to recognize that many may have already lost a job or had changes in their income and some more folks may face these situations as time goes on in our current economy. Uh, the loss of a job or reduce of income can clearly threaten one's sense of stability and security um, for the individual or even the family system. Uh, if somebody once was the provider in the home and no longer can do that, that can really crush your sense of self. Um, you know, jobs create a sense of purpose and identity for us. They create social connection for us. Um, and also that, that security and stability. So we wanna be mindful that those changes can really lead to um, add additional stress. It can lead to feelings of anxiety, anger, fear, uncertainty, sadness. Um, so we wanna be mindful of that. And also we'll talk a little bit about mental, res mental health resources later that are related to that. But uh, here are some just practical considerations. Um, all of these things highlighted in red are links for you to click on, as Kira mentioned. Uh, so there's links to unemployment compensation, pandemic unemployment assistance. There's a small grant that Delaware County is offering for small business owners, but I will say the deadline is May 6th. So if that's an interest to you, check it out. Uh, there's important info for PA employees that are impacted. There's just a wealth of um, information on that website. And then, of course, tax day has moved to July 15th. So keep that in mind. Uh, next slide. So now I want to move on to this topic of grief. And, you know, I think grief is often thought of as the loss of a loved one. Um, but we want to expand on that topic a little bit and consider this idea of collective grief. Um, the American Psychological Association posted an article by Kirsten Weir 
um, who really speaks to this. Um, it's the idea that this pandemic can create a series of losses that are felt for people. Um, we're in the middle of this collective grief um, where she says, we are all losing something now. And I quote that. Um, you know, we're losing a sense of stability and control that we once had or predictability in the future. Um, so not only the loss of a loved one at a time like this, but also through illness, the loss of employment, social connections, uh, anticipated plans we may have had and celebrations. Um, we'd be remiss to not mention our poor seniors who are um, not going to have a typical senior year or end to their senior year. Um, so there's an article there on that as well. Um, but there's this collective sense of grief as we watch our world destabilize around us. Our economic system, our education system, healthcare, uh, work systems have all been impacted. So we've kind of been forced to um, figure out how to ride this wave um, fairly quickly. Um, so again, just keeping in mind that everybody is feeling something right now, um, even under the best of circumstances. Uh, the next link is Peter's Place. They have some valuable resources um, and there's a couple other additional grief resources there. So we can move on to mental health. Um, you know, again, like I said, everybody is experiencing some sense of loss and um, those losses can compound to really affect our mental health. Um, we uh, want to be mindful of that. Most of the resources on this page are 24-7. Uh, we created an RTSD mental health resource page that gives you just some guidance. If you're just going over kind of going through a small um, kind of emotional struggle, you can always reach out to like an employee assistance program who usually offers six sessions or so. Um, there's some lists of providers there that accept most insurances. And then there's also some crisis numbers on that page as well if you wanted to visit that. Um, and then of course, these 24 seven hotlines are great. Um, the Delaware County Telehealth Helpline was just developed and that's just if you need someone to talk to. Um, just if you're feeling stressed, anxious, or depressed and want to have someone to talk to and feel like it's hard to talk to your family because you don't want to upset them. Um, we're all putting on a brave face these days. So we'll move on to the next slide. So then there's the issue of drug and alcohol, and we want to make sure that we're mentioning this. I know Nadine posted some resources on her Karen um, slides that have some resources for you to look at. But, um, you know, this crisis that we're in creates a heightened sense of stress and anxiety that can lend itself to a variety of harmful behaviors, and one of which could be drug and alcohol. Um, we also want to be mindful that those in recovery may be particularly vulnerable for relapse at a time like this. Um, overall, experts want to warn against kind of self-medicating through substance abuse as a way to deal with stress, anxiety, and even boredom. Um, we want to consider the use, uh, they want us to consider the use of healthy coping strategies um, when issues arise or urges arise to use uh, at a time like this when we're under stress. So if something is becoming a concern to you, for you or a family member. There are a variety of helplines available. There's links here. There's also virtual recovery meetings going on um, that are listed under the PA Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs. So um, please reach out for help and know that those, those helplines are confidential uh, and it's okay to reach out for help. Next slide. So then we're gonna move on to kind of the crisis and safety concerns. Um, you know, we always wanna be mindful of the overall safety. Uh, every, everyone may experience a, a period of vulnerability during this time. Uh, there's a list of five action steps. I think, you know, as social workers, our view is kind of the homeschooling community. That's our mission, is to tie those things together. And at a time like this, when we're not seeing the students every day um, in our buildings, and we're not seeing the families and parents every day, um, there's some action steps there that you can help someone who you feel is in emotional pain. That might be a neighbor, it might be a friend, it might be a family member. So that's just a great link to have a sense of what to do if you feel like someone's in crisis or might be entering into a crisis. Um, there's crisis text lines you can use. The Delaware County has a mobile crisis connections team that can walk you through a crisis and help you decide on a level of care. Um, if that person needs emergency services or some other resource, uh, national lifelines for suicide prevention, safe to say something has been developed by the um, PA department of the attorney general. And that's a line you can call if you're concerned about someone's personal safety or threats. Um, and of course, the, the disaster distress helpline. Next slide. Um, we also want to be mindful that this feeling of stress can really 
really help pe um, lead people to feel a sense of a loss of control. And um, you know, there's the domestic abuse hotline that's always still available um, to use for those who may, you know, the loss of income may lead to kind of destabilization of housing resources. Um, where someone may be forced to move back into a situation that they weren't in or stay in a situation that they were hoping to get out of. So those numbers are there as well. Um, and the child abuse and neglect, of course, you know, families are under a large degree of stress. Um, long gone are the days when child welfare workers come in and take a child out of a home effective immediately unless there's something really egregious going on. Um, conflict is normal in families and at a time like this, stress can lead to increases in conflicts. Um, so please know that child welfare workers are not looking to take children out of homes. They're looking to find ways and resources to support families to manage stress in a, in a healthier way um, and find ways to be safe. Um, so next slide. Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing about the mental health. I didn't mention that a lot of them are, are telehealth at this point. So if you are looking for counseling, uh, there are telehealth options at all levels of care, whether that be outpatient, um, intensive outpatient programs, partial programs. Um, those are all still available on a telehealth platform. So feel free to reach out for children and adults. Um, here's a list of general resources that you can go to that may have a variety of different um, basic needs resources or mental health resources. Of course, our social work contact information is there. Uh, Kira and I have also developed a Twitter page this year, so follow us at RTSD Social Work. Uh, we'll be posting resources that are relevant as we get them to the communities and uh, students and families. And just in closing, you know, this, this topic that we talked about today is very heavy. Um, we recognize that it's a heavy topic, um, but I also do want to end saying that we have seen so much strength, so much courage, um, so much gratitude and kindness, and that we are all in this together. And our community is really stepping up to the plate, and we know that we're all looking out for one another. 